pandemic-induced hiatus. The Alan Cox Show Bud Light Cruise. I'm calling it Captain Fun's Floating Fandango, presented by WMMS and Bud Light. Confirmed to be on the brand new Lady Caroline afternoon cruise. On the afternoon of the 26th, you've got to win your way on. You can go to WMMS.com for all the details. We'll put you and a pal on the guest list all this week as well. So be caller 10. And it's uh, you and a friend joining us on the 26th for the Alan Cox Show Bud Light Cruise. Good luck. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Some things are too good to be true. This thing is too true to be good. The Alan Cox Show. True Dad. On 100.7 WMMS. The return of the Alan Cox Show cruise. And so. Think you're going to join the Lady Caroline Club? What is. Bum, okay. bum, is that a sex bum. move or what is that? The la- What's the Lady Caroline Club? Is that a thing? Know. We can make it up right now. Oh. Brand new boat. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Chris and the boat? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, well, I'm, I, I'm flying solo. No, no, no. Gwen oh. won't be there. I'm solo. So I will well, not. do it solo. I, w- <laughs> <laughs> I, I will not be befouling their men's room, If that's at least mm. not in that way. Mm. I may befoul it in some other ways, but uh, not in that way. I will say. That. I wouldn't presume on our friendship. When we were on the Corona cruise, their bathrooms, like they had one of those big tubs as a urinal. And it, I'm like. All right, we're gonna get real close with our listeners peeing in this. Thing I don't together. remember that. I don't yeah. remember. No, it was just ever. like a little tiny bathroom. Though. Yeah, that's what I remember. Small, it was a small bathroom. I feel like it was like one of those tubs or, or no, or, it wasn't a tub. No, I think like you a, peed in like the a sink, trough. Man. <laughs> Come on, man. Get no, okay, no, like, remember was... the remember the remember the pee trough? It had the two handles and the faucet. Remember that? You could rinse it off sure while you were in there. Yeah, it just had a uh, a urinal and one stall. And that's what I sink. remember. Yeah. Okay, maybe I misremember. Maybe you peed overboard. Maybe no, you peed over the side of, and that's why they've decommissioned the Nautica Queen. Don't pee over the side. But at least that frees up the nickname for you, Pound King. So it is a do what you want to with it. It's a big boat. It's a, it, it's massive. Lady Caroline is a big boat. I'm gonna bring a chair. And you just fling it out. We're bringing a big party. What do so you What good. do you need to bring a chair? They have so, chairs. I know. I want. I want one of those light reclining chairs where I could just have like the little uh, reflector and my sunglasses <laughs> just lay out. In the middle of a crowd there, of people, Poundcake wants there to be a thing. Oh, you want it to be like the Lido deck on the love boat or something? Mm-hmm. I was like, if I can't be on a yacht, this is the next best thing. Huh? And be posted up next to the meatballs. Where's my sweet? Oh yeah, those. Of course, food is always so good. Yeah. I like meatballs. <laughs> Add it to the list. 353. <laughs> Add that to the list. I like meatballs. I like meatballs. Meatballs are good, yo. Meatballs are good, yeah. When my aunt, she always made the meatballs for, like, the crockpot meatballs for our, you know, family functions and stuff. And when I found out she was putting, like, grape jelly in it. So good. And I was like, what? That's, that's, she's like, you've been eating these yes. for years. It's like grape jelly and ketchup that's and, like, hack. garlic mm-hmm. powder. Like, yep. I'm like, this, none of this feels like it should go together. She's like, you, you, I've watched you eat 50 of these. Like, this is exactly what it is. When we would go to Gwen's family's house in, in Michigan, like, when her extended family would all get together at her late grandfather's house. Not a big house. He'd been there for, you know, 70 years or whatever. And she's got this huge family. And so everybody's bringing food. Some people, you know, and somebody would, one of her aunts would always make one of those little crock pots. I don't know why it wasn't a big one, but one of those little crock pots full of like tiny meatballs. Mm-hmm. I would just make a beeline for the crock pot full yeah. of meatballs. And you got I didn't care what else first. was going on. I wasn't going for the chips. I, I mean, I, you know, a little bit of crudite. I'm still me. But I would just hammer down those meatballs. They're so good. Bill, to have all those balls of meat in my mouth. Oh, yeah. Sucking down those <laughs> meatballs. <laughs> so good. <laughs> That's right. Just like meatballs. pancakes. <laughs> I, think, uh-huh. I think Blake had ham for the first time this weekend because I made her a ham sandwich for the pool. And she ate it. And she looked at me and goes, is this beef? This is good. Like that. And I was like, it's ham. How is she like never, ham. She's never had ham. I know. I asked her. Especially living with you for a year. Right. Well, we've. <sighs> We've had turkey sandwiches a lot. We'll have like mashed up avocado with a, like a turkey sandwich. And 
she was like starstruck by this ham, but it was honey ham. So I was Star like, starstruck. She was blown away. Okay, but I don't know starstruck. Starstruck. No, it was she, a very famous pig, right? <laughs> it's a very famous ham sandwich that I make. Some pig. <laughs> Some thing. But she just goes, "This is beef," like that. Like she was all confused and excited at the same time. Like, no, that's ham. Have you not had ham? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, now she has. She can't say that anymore, right? She chose it twice. Yeah. So nice, she chose it twice. She did. Yep. I like some ham. So if you don't want lamb chops, there's lots of other things I can make. Chicken breast. Rump roast. Hot dogs. No, I can't. I can't eat any of them. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Lisa, honey, are you saying you're never going to eat any animal again? What about bacon? No. Ham? No. <laughs> Pork chop? Dad, those all come from the same animal. <laughs> yeah, right, he's a, a wonderful, magical animal. <laughs> <laughs> a wonderful, magical animal. Homer's kind of stupid. No. <laughs> At least they've drawn him that way. Yeah. Alan, my aunt makes spaghetti sauce of grape jelly in it. My boyfriend absolutely loved it until he found out there was grape jelly in it, and it made him throw up. See, that's silly. That's that is dumb. stupid. That's your brain getting in the way of something that you find delicious. Alan, I've got IKEA meatballs in the freezer for dinner. I heard mm. those are good. I've never had it's them. The poop I've that only makes had good. yeah, it's the poop in the chocolate. You don't know if it's in the chocolate cake mm-hmm. or in the meatballs. I enjoyed eating veal until I watched the South South Park episode. And the- Did you not know what it was? Everything no. goes back to South South Park really is your North Star, isn't it? Is, is it's your Seinfeld? The corrupted no, my I, yeah. I haven't. I haven't. Um, I like Seinfeld a lot, but every single reference I know in life is not from the Seinfeld show. Pound Cake goes. I knew about this from. I didn't learn anything from Seinfeld, right? Everything he refers to, I learned about X, Y, and Z from South Park. Well, it's also been on for twenty-five years, so there's a lot to learn. A lot of episodes. And he's younger. Yeah, I learned that Veal was And he's not going to learn cow. from school. <laughs> I was going to say, hey, make all the excuses you want, but the fact remains. Day is never finished. Master got me working. Someday Master set me free. Season four, episode 35. There's not it. 35 episodes in a season. It was back then, season four. Mm, all right. I, listen, I, yeah. I will defer to his knowledge on South Park. I'm, I stopped watching that show 20 years ago. I, I, there's no way I'm going to know more about it than he does. Like, I, that's what I miss about those old seasons. Like, when I watched Queer as Folk, like, they had, their season was Season like, four had 17 episodes. <laughs> that's a lot of episodes. <laughs> more, more than shut up. Some He's just making now. things up, of and course. I believed him because I go, well, surely he'll know. Uh, it like, sounded like a lot for any television show to produce, especially animated. You're not going to produce 35 for one episodes. Season, yeah. Right. Even back in the day when they were making a lot more episodes. Yeah, of like 24, tele- 25 23 was episodes. Like that right. Yeah. The most they've ever produced in a season of South Park is 17 episodes. Season six was 17 episodes. And they've gotten increasingly less because these yeah. guys are like, yeah, we're billionaires. We, we're going to keep doing this, but we don't have to keep gotta, doing this. They got to get the uh, restaurant going. Yeah, they pumped a lot of money into that. But then they signed that big deal with Paramount Plus. Yeah, they're doing fine. With the Casa Bonita? Yeah. Place? Yeah. And then, signed yeah. a big deal. I watched that movie Air over the weekend. Look good? Yeah, about Jordan. Yeah, I think it's pretty wild, though. I think it was an interesting uh, move to make where you never see Michael Jordan's face. They cast somebody to play Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. but you only see him either in, like, profile three-quarter or yeah. from behind. So it's about him, but they they just cast a dude. So it would be wild to tell your parents, Mom, I'm going to play Michael Jordan in a movie. And mm-hmm. they go, oh, my God, but you're never going to see my face. I've been catching up on that show, Winning Time, and that show's a lot of fun. Isn't Jason Siegel in that this yes, season? Yes, he is. Yeah. He was in it last season, too. Oh, okay. But he's... Uh, I, I'm still on season one, but I'm having a lot of fun watching that one. Not watching that. That's a good one. It's about the '70s Lakers, like the '80s, the dynasty. Yeah, when like the when the dynasty began, like '79 to '80s, season one, and I think season two was the following season. I'm fascinated, and we talk about this a, quite a bit because you know, uh, to be in touch with your own mortality is it's a universal thought, really. And so I'm always fascinated by these people who show up as the oldest people either in the world or in the country. And I think the second oldest woman in the United States 
uh, just turned 114 years old. I- I'm confused by a lot of this, too, because every time we talk about the oldest person in the world, they always seem to be younger than this. So, But this is a woman in Houston, and I don't know how... Huh. I don't know how easily you'll understand what she's saying, but uh, they were um, uh, celebrating her over the weekend that she turned 114 down there in Houston, Texas. It's growing segments of the population, nearly doubling since the year 2000, according to the Pew Research Center. There are now more than 90,000 centenarians in the U.S. alone. 90,000 people over 100 years old in this country. That's For so anybody many. who thinks... Um, that life is getting worse. Uh, people are literally living longer than ever. 90,000. There's simply no way to know how many years that is total. But 90,000 people in this country, over 100. That means if you're 100 and a day. And again, there's simply no way to know how many days old you'd be there. Um, but a lot of them in this country. But an even more astonishing category are people who get to 110 and beyond. They're called super centenarians. And I want you to meet one super Houston woman who is now making history. My name is Ethel Williams Harrison, and I am 68 years old. My name is... How old is she going to be next year? 69. Dorothy Mae Williams, and I am... 94 <laughs> years old. So now yeah. how old she is, yeah. I, she had to look to her hand. I'm trying to forget. <laughs> how old did you miss Elizabeth? No, I am. Oh, I'm very, very young. Look at me. I'm, <laughs> la- I'm like the young chicken. Happy birthday. Hey, they put a wig on her, right? She's 114. The 94-year-old is her daughter. The 68-year-old is her granddaughter. Good Pound take this should make you feel so good. Because it's always old black ladies in this country. I know, but... And you, and the things, you know, we talk about the things that old people have seen. Old black ladies. Mm -hmm. They've seen it all. They have seen it all. They have lived through it all. They have ducked it all. They have bobbed and weaved around it all. I'm praying for it. Uh, My grandmother passed away. I mean, nowadays it would be considered young, but it was, she was only 74 and she had cancer. So, um... I didn't really get to enjoy my grandmother for as long as I wish I could have. I was like, my grandma died right before she turned 103. And my grandma was white. (laughs) That's what I I heard. I often wonder how long she would have lived had she been black. Pocky knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Elizabeth Francis turned an astounding 114 years old. I never know what you're talking you about, Alan. Don't. Look at that cake. Happy 114. She can't have any of that. This week, making world history as five generations of her family celebrated her remarkable the milestone. A film crew from Norway and a researcher from Lord. Florida came to record her birthday and present her with a plaque. She is the oldest in Texas, the oldest living person in Texas, number two in the United States. And that's with Ted Cruz consistently trying to kill you. Mm -hmm. Right. Number seven in the world and number two number two in the world who lives at home. You live in your in your castle. I talked with Miss Elizabeth, her daughter and granddaughter, just days before her birthday. But do people think you're crazy when you say your mother's 113? They call they don't say crazy, they just say you're lying. When she was born in 1909, William Taft was president. 90% of all babies were born at home, and women and black people could not vote. She can no longer remember most of the extraordinary history she's lived through, like world wars, segregation, and two pandemics. But she is able to tell you how she's lived her remarkable life. Now, do you smoke? Never have. Do you drink? Oh, no, ma'am. What do you eat? Everything. <laughs> Her grand. I eat everything. I just don't eat much of it. She's like, my family's here only for today. As soon as, you, as, soon as the camera crew leaves, they <laughs> they're, they're gone. gone. As soon as the Norwegian camera crew leaves, they stress and flirg and old person. Right. Can I put a damper on this? Please. I love a good damper. Do you ever get frustrated or upset yes. or jealous? Oh. Over the fact that black people in... What, uh, women can vote now? No, I don't, Mary. <laughs> no, because Bill is not woke at all, right. all, right? He's never been woke. No. No, that this lady gets to be 114 and your dad's dead.
Because I feel like that. I never thought, never crossed my mind. I look at her and I look at her. There's no 90, rhyme or reason with how long people live. Her 90 year old daughter. And yes. I'm like, why does that 90 year old lady get to have a mom? I think it's great that they're all together. That is cool, but it doesn't give a tinge of jealousy in you. No. I see old people with their parents, like people who are 75. I'm not a jealous person. I am. Like Cher? No. <laughs> Cher and her mom, her mom just passed. That's what I'm saying. And Cher's also 113. She looks great. I'll go to like buffets and I'll see a 65-year-old dude with his 100-year-old dad. And, you know, and I'm yeah. like, why did they get to have a 100-year-old dad? You never feel like that? No. All right. I'm happy that the people in my family traditionally live as long as they do, I guess. I, I hope, uh, selfishly, I hope some of that's coming my way. I'm not ready to go. My dad died at 59, though. Yeah. That's real young. young. That's a few years older than me. Right. That's very young, yes. So that's yes. why when I see stuff like this, I there is that little, that little, is the word twinge? Tinge? Yes, sure. Twinge or tinge. Yeah, Both of those things of jealousy inside me. Where a I'm pang like, of jealousy. Pang, yes. Where I'm like, good for you. I'm glad that you're old, but like, it's kind of It never occurs to me, no. Hmm. Now, you did have a, you had a different relationship with your dad, right? You had kind of mended fences. We started to, yeah. Right, not long before all this. So you feel like the rug was pulled out. Yes. Right. So like I it was taken from me prematurely. And, and I don't have anything like bed. that. We, If anything, we got more time with my dad than we ever thought we would. Because it was like two extra weeks, right? No, no, no. no. Oh, because he got diagnosed. Diagnosis. With, got diagnosed yeah. like in 07, right after I had moved back. And they were like, yeah, he's going to be gone by Christmas. And we were like, what? So we got eight years and two weeks with him. Yeah. And for most of that time... You'd never know he was sick. It just all the dominoes fell at the very last minute. So, but no, that it wouldn't even occur to me to be jealous of somebody who was. Mm. Now, I don't know how I'll feel uh, if I'm on my deathbed. And I, do. I just think about that a lot because I have a little kid. Yeah. Do so want... I'm always doing math now in my head because I have a seven year old. You're so bad at it. Do you want to be friends with my dad? <laughs> Maybe like he could be your dad for a while? No, I don't want a, I don't want a new dad. I want my dad. Well, your dad's dead. dead. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Right. So when I see old people, sometimes I get mad at them. You get mad at old people. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sometimes where I look like at Erica. Like, Man, why yeah, do you have that in common. Yeah. yeah. You get to be old and my dad gets to be dead. That doesn't seem fair. Yeah, but by the time you're 114, you have wanted to not be alive for 10 years at least. Right? You're like, she's lying there in bed. There's no, no quality. She that. just is I still that. alive. There's no quality right, of but life there. <laughs> another 20 years with her dad would have been nice. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> if he could have made it to, I don't know, 65, <laughs> that would yeah. have been cool. But again, there's, there's never going to be a time where you're like, okay, he can go now. No, but maybe to fend. But there would be, I think, anything after 80. But maybe to fend off that pang. You don't know what your relationship would have continued to be with your dad. You, know you guys might have fallen out again. I think about that too. Or if and when yeah, I get once famous. He, you he, stop gambling? That would well, have really hurt his feelings. No, that's what I was going to say is that if and when I get famous, he would have spent all my money. <laughs> you know, like make me feel bad and give him money or well, something. Well, in or that case, me I will it. spend that money. You want to be and, my yeah, dad? I'll, I will spend money like your dad for, <laughs> just to make you feel like he's around. I think about my grandmother in like the aspect of how she would feel about like my sexuality and, and you know, where I am religiously in my life. So why? What's but, your sexuality? And where you? Where are you religiously? He's gay on both fronts. Why didn't you, you gay tell for Jesus? me yeah. that you were gay? My mom or my grandmother was just like a real. She was from the South, a Baptist woman, and I just I I'm curious to know how she would feel about. <laughs> I don't think you have to be curious about it. I think you know exactly how she would feel. I know, but I can't. But the fact yeah, but you're that, still her grandchild. I mean, you my can, mom was religious. Too. My mom still is religious, but she uh, she accepts me. I don't. She a lot of grandparents never, are more open minded about their grandkids than they were about their own kids. That's true for sure. Yeah, I'll never get I, I'll never get that closure. I mean, it was it's a moot point now, but she she passed before I was ten. Why don't you but, come out? When you were nine to her. Actually, I think I did come Grandma, up to my mom. I like boys. I, I bet she knew. Psst, psst, Grandma, let me wear your dress. Hmm. You fairy. I remember one time. <laughs> let me wear your <laughs> He's not a cross dresser. <laughs> He's a gay man. I remember one time she dropped me. <laughs> um, there was On a, your head, I presume. This was back in the day where we used to go in the basement for thunderstorms, and she was uh, she turned off all the lights, and we were she was carrying me, and uh, we were running downstairs, and she tripped. <laughs> I fell. <laughs> She had me in her arms.
Why would you go in the basement for the thunderstorm? Wouldn't that, that be like a and Why would you chance? turn the lights off? That was ev- that's what we did. Like we when there was a thunderstorm, we turned off all we unplugged all the electronics, turned everything off and we went in the basement till it was over. At your grandma's house or at your house too? This was every, everywhere. Everyone I knew did this. <laughs> this was <laughs> this was a thing. Was that not a thing? I have never no. heard of this. Yeah, we tur- we would get in the basement for thunderstorms. We would turn off all the electronics and run downstairs. But that would be the first place that would be affected. No. Yes, I, in heavy rain, wouldn't it? Like your basement's gonna flood before anything else. We would get in the basement for thunderstorms. Not a tornado. It was, it was, I think it was more for the lightning aspect of it. Probably. I don't know. I was a kid, but this is what I. Grew up with we, we. You always supposed to turn off electronics and go into the basement. This but is that's what I was also taught. like before. Like that's what you did before they had breakers. Like the forties. Yeah, yeah. But like I've never heard. My grandmother was and... born in nineteen nineteen. Okay, yeah, but the house wasn't. I'm sure it was up to code enough to have circuit breakers. Traditions, man. We run downstairs. <laughs> Traditions <laughs> during thunderstorms. That's what we do. All right. And she dropped me. Good and for her. One time I took took her dentures out, put them in the back of my tricycle, and, and took off down the street. I remember that, too. Some of my earliest memories. Well, and I'm 35. My dad died when I was 15 until Mary to shut up. Yeah, but that's no, unfair, I'm that's unfair you feel too. the same I mean, thing. Right. That's, I'm sure you've and had feelings like that. Alan, I agree with Mary. I feel jealous of people with their parents all the time. My mom died at 63. I was 38, and it's bull shrimp. Yeah. Well, yeah, you never know, man. I mean, Imagine having parents that you don't even like that much. You ever think about that? Yeah, you could still fix it. Fix what? I can't fix my dad. They're alive, but it's like they're dead. <laughs> not like they're dead. It's just I don't know. We we have the relationship we have. It's whatever. But you like your parents. It's not. I like, like you don't... I like them, but yeah. I, like it's fine. Like I don't talk to <laughs> it's my dad. It's fine. I don't talk to my hey, dad. Hey, what's ever. your relationship with your parents? It's fine. It's exactly fine. Yeah, it's fine. I don't. Right. But I I mean I I think I talked to my dad on. Father's Day. But you would be somber when he dies. Well, your, fa- your, your father we'll will see. your father we'll will be gone. I yes. worry for you when your dad dies. Why? I'm worried that you're going to have a lot of um, unresolved yes, issues. A lot of it. And no, Mary is the queen of unresolved of issues. No, but I don't. I don't have issues with him. I just we have the relationship that we have, and it's been that way my entire life. Okay. So I don't like. I don't feel like there's like, oh, I need to reconnect with him, or because I never really. Had much connected in the first place. In the first place. So yeah. it's just like I get that. We, yeah. yeah, it'll be. I don't want him to die. But when he does marry, but we'll see what the payout. Fine. Like. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. the difference too. Is that <laughs> the you're gonna get money when your dad dies, and when they I came, don't know if I did. Well, why wouldn't you? They'd write you out of the will for they, the Mormon thing. They might. I don't know. Oh. I didn't ask, and I'm not gonna go ask it and be like. What, what's my cut? Yo, like, am I still yeah. in there or what? Yeah, I don't know. Alan, you go to the basement I mean, because of a tornado. Tell Pound Cake that. That's what I thought. That's what I yeah. said. I've heard of that for tornadoes, but never for thunderstorms. Right. Okay, I've got to take a break. I will have those baby clock tickets for you. One of the wilder match, uh, matchups on tours, Death Clock and Baby Metal. And uh, both bands are going to be coming through to do the Agora on September the 6th. So we'll do that coming back. <laughs> The Alan Cox Show. On our free iHeartRadio app and...